Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Um, dum, 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 bum, 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 la, 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 Claudia. La, la, la. Claudia. Hmm? Have you any idea what time it is? Certainly I have. Well, you wouldn't know it, the way you're sitting around reading that mail order catalog. I'm not reading it. I'm dreaming of the new handyman we're about to hire. Well, I'm sure he won't be a dream handyman, so you'd better watch the clock instead. I can tell you practically exactly what time it is without even looking at the clock. <laughs> I dare you. You see, Mama, when the shadow of that maple tree reaches all the way down the driveway, it's 5.30. Well, my mouth droppeth open. Now, what do you think of your daughter? You should have been a sailor. Maybe we should have been sailors. Doesn't look like we're very good farmers, so maybe we should have been sailors. Why? What's the matter with you and David as farmers? Because we have to hire a farmer to farm our farm. Oh, That's not so why. fast. Now, wait a second. You, you haven't hired him yet. No, but we're just about to. You hope? Mama, we are going to take Peter Listrom no matter what. It's the nearest thing we've come to a farmer within weeks. Well, Claudia, don't expect too much of him. The carpenter told you Peter wasn't really a farmer. Well, that's you know. because he's the carpenter's brother-in-law. You know how it is with in-laws. Oh, I just can't wait to meet him. David's going to be so pleased. Well, don't count your farmers before they're hatched, Claudia. I'm not counting him. I'm counting on him. <laughs> what time did he say he'd be here? Half past six. Half past six. And David is going to be here three minutes after six. Do you now, remember? Mama, don't rush me. It takes me exactly 15 minutes to get to the station from here. If I leave at quarter of six... I'd rather you'd left at 20 minutes to six and took 20 minutes to get there. Don't worry. You don't think I'd be late to meet a train David's on, do you? And David would certainly appreciate it if you got there all in one piece. Mama, what do you think Peter Listrom's going to be like? Can't you wait and see? Oh, I wish we didn't have to wait. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. David will be so pleased. We're going to be able to start hoeing the fields and planting the... Say, what are we going to plant? You go plant your two feet in that car of yours and get on your way. Oh, now, all on. right. You want to come along? I do not. You mean you don't want to come down to the station and meet your one and only son-in-law? <laughs> I'll keep the home fires burning, thank you. The less I drive with you at the wheel, the happier I am and the older I'll grow. Well, I know you. You think you'll be in the way. Well, if, if you insist, I, I do get rather embarrassed watching the way you two carry on. All right, Mommy, you stay here. And if Peter Listrom comes, hang on to him, please. Yoo-hoo, David! Yoo-hoo! David, here I am. I can't whistle. I just had some chocolate. Well, well, Mrs. Norton. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, David. Made it to the station all right? No flat tires? No accident? I just got into the car and said, to the station car. It drove here all by itself. <laughs> no wonder you're safe and sound. You haven't kissed me? Here? At the station? In front of all the... Well, these... all the other wives are kissing all their other husbands. And then you kiss all your other husbands, too. You're all my other husbands. For the time being. Hello. Hello. Now, come on, get into the car. I'm in a hurry to get home and shower. You get in the other side, you're tired, darling. I'll drive. I'm not that tired. Well, why wait until you are that tired? Go on, darling. Slide over. What's the matter? Am I driving not good enough for you? No, not half good enough. But it's good enough for me. I mean, you let me drive here all the way to the station to get you. Well, you drive one way, I drive the other. It's only fair. Someday you'll learn. Someday, maybe I won't care so much how much we break our necks. Don't say that. All right, I'm sliding over. Good girl. David, what would you like to do most all weekend? Mm, I'd like to forget all about architecture and get that blasted farm of ours going. You would? But I don't know where to begin. It's a cinch I can't do it all by myself. It's a cinch you can't. Once the place is going, well, one man will be able to handle it. But right now, there's too much to be done. Mm, there certainly is. The fields are in terrible condition. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to raise vegetables this summer if we don't get going soon. It's practically May. It's 
practically May, isn't it? So it is, so it is. Oh, darling, I took your khaki trousers out this afternoon. They are your farming trousers, aren't they? Well, they won't get worn out very quickly. But hoeing a field must be very hard on trousers. Hoeing a field mentally won't even put a callus on my brain. <laughs> Not even yours. But hoeing a field with your hands will put calluses on them, won't it? I'd love to see them on mine. I wonder if you'll be saying that tomorrow night. What? Look, darling, what is this all about? Can't you guess? You have... You haven't hired a... A farmer. But I have! Except that I haven't met him yet. You haven't... What? David, his name is Peter Listrom, and he's a brother-in-law of our carpenter, and he's at the house waiting for us. At least I hope he is. Is he a farmer? Mm, no, but he's willing to help. Well, well, that's a beginning. The carpenter says he has a very strong back. Mm, that'll come in handy. Maybe that's why he's called a handyman. Anyway, he's supposed to be at home now waiting for us. Oh, I just know he's going to work out. How do you know? Well, Peter's such a nice name. I have a feeling he's going to be young and intelligent and capable and an enormous help to you. Hmm. I have a feeling that if he just says, Hello, Mr. Norton, I'll think he's the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. Our earth, darling. Our earth. And this weekend you'll be a farmer... Just like you wished. Come on, David, let's hurry. Yoo-hoo, Mama, we're home. Well, what took you so long? David drove like a snail. Hello, Mother. Claudia, Claudia, he's here. He is? Mm -hmm. Mother, it is getting so that if there's anything I ever want, all I have to do is rub Claudia's head and make a wish. <laughs> That's true. Rub it now. Uh, wait till I see Peter. I put him in the living room. Where else? I'll go right in. Me too. Coming, Mama? I should say not. I'm going to get dinner ready. Make it a big dinner, Mama. Tonight we're really going to eat like farmers. I could eat a whole field. Of nuts? Oh, um, hello, Mr. Listrom, I'm, uh, I'm David Norton. Hello, Mr. Norton. Oh, no. <clears throat> Your brother-in-law told us about you. He did, huh? He's married to my sister. Well, that's nice, isn't it? I, uh, I understand that you have some extra time and... Got plenty of time. Got plenty of time. Uh, and that you'd like to do some work for me. Well, depends on the work. Don't like to use up all my time working, huh? No, no. That makes sense, doesn't it, David? <laughs> yes, great. What kind of work is it, Mr., uh, Mr., uh, huh? Well, it's, uh, it's outside work. It's a, it's a beautiful field. It's even got some stones in it. <clears throat> Be quiet. Uh, I, um, I just want to get a few small patches cleaned up for some spring planting. Outside work, huh? The sun's hot. Well, it may rain. Rain's cold. I don't like to get my feet wet. Might catch cold. You see, David, that's what I always say to you. Well, we'll start slowly, Mr. Listrom. I like everything slowly. Always take it nice and easy and slow. Is, is, is your name really Peter, Mr. Listrom? It's what they call me. You and your feelings. Are you, um, are you interested, Mr. Listrom? Well... Got to think about it. Got to think about it. We can't give you too long to think about it. I was planning to start on it tomorrow morning. Oh, it won't take me till tomorrow morning. Never think that much. I'll just stand here and look out the window and do my thinking. Fine. Fine. You go right ahead. Claudia, come over here. David, do you think he'll be terribly expensive? Whatever he charges, he won't be worth it. But do you think he'll charge a lot? Probably, and I probably won't want to pay it. Oh, for once, Mrs. Norton, a man called Peter is not tall, dark, and handsome. But he's very tall and very dark. So maybe that makes up for the intelligence. David, do you think he'll take the job? Mm, no. He's still thinking. On him, that's a bad sign. Maybe he just looks and acts and sounds dumb. Maybe, but what else is there? Mm, that's true. I think I'll just tell him to forget all about it. Uh, Mr., uh, well, I've done my thinking. 
You feeling all right? Oh, I feel fine, huh? Well, that's good. My uh, brother-in-law, he's married to my sister. Yes. Uh, he told me you're the kind of a guy who fixes up houses. Yes, I, I'm an architect, if that's what you mean. Huh? <laughs> yes, I fix up houses. And I'm the kind of a fellow who fixes up fields. Fix them up fine. Make the furrows nice and smooth and long and even. So, I've been thinking. So you said. I've been thinking if I fix up your fields and you fix up my house, we could get along fine. Uh, me uh, fix up your house? Yeah, the roof fell in last week and the porch is all kind of caved in. But if you'll fix up my house and I'll fix up your fields, we can call it square. You mean you'll... You'll... You'll come tomorrow? What's the matter? Don't you follow my thinking? Well, I follow it, Mr. Listrom, and I... I think you're generous. I... <laughs> I think you're brilliant. Oh, now, well, now, Mr. O. I'm the dumbest one of 11 sons my mother had. And folks say I ain't smart enough to breathe, but... Well... Kind of a way. <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe I am right. Well, then I'll be seeing you. I'll be over about six o'clock, huh? Oh. Yes, and uh, I'll get started on your house the first thing in the morning. Well, I'll be fine, Mr. Uh, Mr. Well, we'll be fine. Well, good night. Huh? <laughs> good, good night. Good night. Hmm. David just think tomorrow you can start hoeing that field after all. Tomorrow? No, I'm a, I'm afraid there's no such luck, darling. What do you mean? That Peter. He was much too smart for me. Tomorrow, while Peter is hoeing my field, I'll be redesigning his house. I guess I'm destined to be just an architect after all. Do, 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 when you see pictures of young people's parties in the papers and magazines, there's one thing you can almost always see well up in front, and that's Coca-Cola. Coke has become as much a part of such gatherings as the young folks themselves. If you have teenagers in your household, you'll find it's a good idea to order Coke by the case. Then there's always ready hospitality for guests of all ages. Well, Mr. King... Looks like I took the job, don't it, huh? <laughs> Looks like David took a job, too. Sure I'm glad I'm going to get my house fixed up. Fixed up. Sure I am. Yeah, David will do a fine job for you. So I hope yep, you... Yep, the Norton sure got a pretty place here. Got a lot of nice big tall trees. I think some of the trees are a little too big and a little too tall. Never heard before a tree can be too tall or too big. Never did. Oh, maybe not for you, but I think they will be for Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Never heard of him. Who's he? Well, the Shakespeare I'm talking about is Claudius Cat, and on Monday, he's going to find out that a tree is a mighty big and tall thing. That's so? Well, I sure do wish a little cat luck. Uh, call me if you need me. I'll be a Whitlin on my porch. See you Monday, Peter. Goodbye. As I was saying, every day Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.